Klon. We are in our office at Village Hall here, uh, the studio of Channel 4, also known as the Mayor's Office. And I have with me today our Communications Director, Diana Tusignan. Hello, Mayor. How are you? I'm well. How Good. Are you? Thanks for coming by today. Thank you for um, me. We are so excited to, to talk about, um, you know, the various departments in Oak Lawn, and uh, your department is one of the ones we are so proud of and such a source of great pride in the community and so essential uh, to the services we provide um, for public safety. So so thank you for coming by. You've been with us for about a year now, maybe a little more than that. Uh, how's everything going? It's, it's going really well. Um, coming in as a new director, I was able to identify uh, our strengths and some of our, our weaknesses. We are currently following a new set of standards, um, nationwide standards that are established in our public safety industry. Uh, and it seems to be working out really well. So we have different so who, standards. Who determines policy. those standards? It is a it's a organization called APCO. So it's the Association of Professional Communications Officials, and they set those standards nationwide, and they also set them at a state level. Do all dispatch centers follow these guidelines? Unfortunately, they don't, and they they should be. Uh, and part of that is. It has a lot to do with the, the staffing of the center, uh, the mm -hmm. availability of training of personnel mm -hmm. who are able to train, um, and those you know, who have more material mm -hmm. available to them and resources. So, so we're very fortunate that we have all those things. So emu emergency communications is kind of a broad title for a lot of things, but the most important thing is that you do is make sure that when someone calls 911 that they get the help right away. Correct. And, and so when a call comes in, can you talk us through kind of a scenario, what the dispatch center is like, you know, who are these people answering the phone, what is their training, you know? I can. Uh, usually, and look, we can start with the training part of that. Uh, our center is, the, the very fundamentals of the training is to start with different types of certifications that you obtain. Mm -hmm. So we do certifications in, in call taking and police dispatching and in fire dispatching. And that's a lot of book work mm -hmm. and it's essentially going through um, no less than two months of, of book training. Mm -hmm. um, once they are successful in completing that phase, we go and we do hands-on training, um, on, the, on mm -hmm. the job training. Uh, when a 911 call comes in, our center is set up where we have call takers, we have different individuals who do police dispatching and different mm -hmm. individuals who do fire dispatching. The center is set up to be a multi-jurisdictional center. So what does we, that mean? We dispatch not only for Oak Lawn, mm -hmm. but we dispatch for Evergreen Park, Burbank, Bridgeview, Bedford Park, Central Stickney, mm -hmm. and soon Hodgkins. Yeah, that's um, exciting. It is very exciting. It is. So this um, will be the biggest we've ever been. It will be, and we do police and fire for those agencies. Um, Hodgkins is coming on, on board um, as part of a, a new legislature that the state has passed, and I can mm -hmm. talk to you a little bit more about that too. Uh, so we do have no less than six to seven individuals in our room. And when a call comes in as a 911 call, if it's a landline, we utilize a computer-aided dispatch system. So the landline telephone number populates where that individual is at, a specific address, a name, mm -hmm. because that phone is registered to someone. They then use the computer system to put the address in. Uh, they will verify an address, even if you're calling from a landline, because you could be calling from your neighbor's home, but the emergency sure. is actually at your home. Sure. Uh, if they're calling from a wireless carrier, which is your, uh, your cell phones, those we also verify will typically get a latitude or mm -hmm. longitude. They don't have a specific address or a specific name. That latitude and, and longitude, um, depending on the carrier, you know, can show you maybe 500 yards away, but it can also be known to show you two blocks away. Okay. So they're not as precise as a wire uh, wireline call. So can I ask if I have a regular wired phone at home, but I'm using voice over IP or like the UVerse or the the whole package where it's mm -hmm. not the old old fashioned Ma Bell kind of landline? Does that is that still a landline? For the the will it will it be address specific or will it operate more like a cell phone? I'm actually glad that you mentioned the VoIP carriers. Um, VoIP is registered to the computer itself, 
So we've had incidents where if you register your phone system and perhaps you live in Oak Lawn uh, and you've moved into a different part of Oak Lawn, wherever that VoIP carrier initially set up your provider with is where it's staying. So we've had individuals who've taken their laptops out of the country and have tried to call 911 from the VoIP and it's registering it back to Oak Lawn. Uh -oh. So we're getting the 911 call here. So that is important. And they're nowhere and they're in Canada or Absolutely, somewhere. Absolutely, or on their vacation somewhere. Um, so we do ask residents or if we're made aware of it, if we see the call coming in, we do inform them to make sure that they get a hold of their provider and update mm -hmm. the address that they're at. It is very different. All three of those, a wireless call and a landline and the VoIP are all different. Mm -hmm. The most, um, you know, the most information that we get is out of a wireline. Okay. But with technology, I mean, those are, you know, becoming less and less. I think and, about yeah. eighty percent or more of our calls in Oak Lawn are now wireless callers wow. that we get. Okay, so everyone's calling on their cell phone. I call on my cell phone, and what information do you get? On your cell phone, we'll typically just get the latitude and longitude. So when you call, um, the dispatcher will ask you, you know, where are you calling from, what address are you mm -hmm. at, or if you're at an intersection, they will ask you that. They'll have you confirm it, and we will also ask you, not that, you know, we don't know that you're in Oak Lawn, but we'll make sure, mm -hmm. and that's in Oak Lawn, correct, that you verify, or you're in Evergreen Park, correct, mm -hmm. and then they move on. When that call is generated while I'm talking to you as a dispatcher, we're putting that information into a computer system. Mm -hmm. That computer system is instant where I put an address and what's going on and whether it's a, going to a police dispatcher or a fire dispatcher, it gets routed instantly. Mm -hmm. So if it's a fire call for you know an ambulance or an EMS call, I'm still on the phone with So you're the still caller. talking to the caller and help is already on the way. Correct. So but you're keeping talking with me and getting more information. Absolutely. So they're able to stay on the phone with you, ask additional questions for first responders. Uh, sometimes it, it mm -hmm. feels you know that nothing's being done and we're asking too many questions, but we already have either the police or fire department mm -hmm. or both on the way. It's just obtaining that additional information. So when they do come to the scene, whether it is a fire response, mm -hmm. they know what we're doing, um, we are there, you know, we have EMD, which is emergency mm -hmm. medical dispatch certifications. We are able to provide CPR over the phone, medical instruction over mm -hmm. the phone. We've done Heimlich maneuver over the phone. Deliver babies? Deliver babies Do over you? The phone. Do you? How many, so, uh, how many, how often does that happen? Uh, it happens. I, we've had, I think, a full delivery here from the time I've been here once. Um, okay. But we've had where we've been able to walk um, the mother, you know, pretty much all the way through, um, you know, giving them reassurance yeah. in case they're in a situation, yeah. you know, that can be changing before they yeah. get on the scene. So, oh my God, such drama! I, I, you know. I have such admiration for for your department because every time that phone rings, something's going on, and and it's it's the cool heads and the procedures and, and the constant training and retraining that that takes all the drama out of it, and it's just taking care of the problem, and and you know it's it's not an easy job. It's not, and it's never a dull moment. Um, and they always say when you first start that career, you you really can't compare it to anything until you get involved and it's multitasking you're doing everything at yeah. once but it's it's interesting because it's your day is different every time every time you come into work you never know what's going to be on the other end of the phone yeah yeah and it's not usually good news when people are calling they're not it, unfortunately it's not i don't think yeah. most people call to say i was just making sure you're having a good day on 911 yeah. it's no, usually no. they're not and having the best day it's not good so did you ever think when you started your career that you would be um, you know, taking control of such a wonderful department, implementing all these positive changes, doing all the training. Did, did you think when you started in this that this is where it would be? I knew, um, I always knew I wanted to move ahead. Uh -huh. um, as I, When I started my career, I did everything I could to, to keep moving ahead. So I do have different certifications um, mm -hmm. that are, are, some of them are, you know, very, specific to mm -hmm. a role of a director of emergency communications others are a little vast but um, I am and I'm very active in, in what we do as far as the committees that we have on these standards I sit on some different boards but 
um, I always wanted to move up and when I found out what a great career it was, I just knew that I, I wanted to be part of the whole and part of bigger. Mm -hmm. And coming into Oak Lawn was a perfect and a great opportunity for me to be able to um, take the center and keep moving it forward. Mm -hmm. um, the technology is here, you know, keep <coughs> advancing in technology. Uh, the state law that we talked about a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. that's new, um, that went into effect last year. So the state of Illinois, all the PSAPs, which are public safety answering points, mm -hmm. have to consolidate. Um, and there are 56 of them in Cook County alone that needed to consolidate. So Hodgkins wow. is part of that consolidation. Um, I'm looking forward to you know getting more of those mm -hmm. towns and villages to come on board with us. And we are, we're very lucky, um, the center that we have in Oak Lawn because we do have the technology. We have a great um, working relationship with our dispatchers mm -hmm. and, and NORCOM provides our mm -hmm. dispatchers for us. But we do it all And together. you are a village employee. I am. I'm a village employee. I have um, a staff that we have operational team leaders, uh, which are essentially my mm -hmm. operations managers, and I have three of them. And I have one um, from All Village of Oak Lawn, a technology team leader mm -hmm. as well. And then the rest of the team, um, we have shift supervisors that we have four of, and then we have our telecommunicators, which mm -hmm. are also through NORCOM. Um, and we have a great understanding, and I think it's a, it's, it, it's a great center. Mm -hmm. I, I've been at a, you know, a, a couple of different consolidated centers in my time, um, large cities and small, and we have a great thing here. Yeah, and, and the professionalism again and the dedication, it's a very, very challenging job, and you're really in the fishbowl so many times, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> you guys are great, a source of great pride. Um, when, when I've seen the changes being slowly implemented, you know, I, I can say, you know, our, our, our dispatch center has never been more credentialed, more professional, and more well-run. So it's, it's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm very proud of everybody. In so there. what's next for us over there? Any, any new things happening in the industry? What can, what can we expect? You know, can, can residents someday, like, take a picture of something and send, like? like yes, we were, um, we just did a, a, a phone, a telephone upgrade to our existing phone system. Mm -hmm. um, and that system will eventually allow for us to be able to use things like text messaging mm -hmm. coming in. And um, the what we call NG911 is next generation 911. So I know a lot of carriers are talking about video streaming, mm -hmm. um, you know, live when people are coming to a scene of an accident um, or if they're witness to crime happen. So those that is the future, um, mm -hmm. and we just need to make sure that we stay on top and, and being able to update things. So mm -hmm. when we're ready to implement, you know, our center's ready to to take those improvements and move yeah, forward. Yeah. Um, but it's just and the training again to do all those things it's it's it, it, it's, it's intense. involved um, it's a whole different way of you know being able to speak to a caller who's frantic and has a lot you know things happening mm -hmm. but then to be able to see that happening is going to be another form of training and that's something that we discuss a lot in, yeah. in the industry now is yeah. you know we're designed to or we were trained to take calls you know, be able to calm people down and walk them through things, um, but to actually see it all happening is going, is it opening up another, another world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And your dispatchers will ride around with our officers, I believe, correct? And correct. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, we do a ride along program. So part of the initial training, um, once they're done with the completion of the book work mm -hmm. and they do the hands on job training depending if they're training in our fire dispatch or as a police dispatcher, um, they'll either, they go through the fire departments and they'll tour them and they'll show them their different boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then we have our dispatchers go out with different police officers from all our different towns. It's wonderful. It is, it's a great way to learn geography. Um, we do have a mapping system that identifies, you know, when you first call, it'll, it'll narrow it down on our map as well. And it goes and populates into the computer. But it's also nice to know, you know, landmarks. So when people are discussing, hey, I'm by the Big Indian. Not, you right. know, where is that? <laughs> right. Yeah, every people know. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, things like that. So they they do get out and they get to meet people, um, and they make sure they're familiar with that. And it actually helps the officers because 
a lot of times they don't understand exactly what it is that we do either. So we're trying mm -hmm. to communicate both ways. We'll have officers and firemen come up and we kind of switch around so that's they good. can see what we do too. That's, that's great. That's how you build a team. So you're doing a great job. So what else do you want to talk about? You're, you're going to be out in the community a little bit. We will be. Um, we're looking forward to being part of Fall on the Green. Um, we'd like to set up something for the kids, um, do mm -hmm. a little 911 education between you know, our dispatchers. Um, I'll be out there as well, be able to interact with the, the residents and mm -hmm. any questions you know, that the kids may have, and mm -hmm. do some role playing with being able to dial 911, making sure they know their addresses. and. Um, it'll that great. should be a, a great weekend. So that's great. I'm looking forward to that. That's great. It's got to be really challenging when kids call little kids. Um, that's a whole nother thing. I yeah. A child callers um, tend to be, be to be quite frank, less frantic than than mm -hmm. a, an adult. Um, they usually know that they're calling to seek help, but mm -hmm. they don't understand the severity of what's going mm -hmm. on. So they tend to stay calmer. But we've had a few children who do a fantastic mm -hmm. job, um, and we try to you know, reach out and recognize those. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to, one of the things I'd like to see implemented too is a child collar program mm -hmm. where we can take um, you know, the kids and, and recognize them for what they're mm -hmm. doing and you know, maybe have them come to a Great meeting. idea. Yeah, just yeah. so, they're, and they're great. They're, they are taught really well at, in school to know their addresses and what's going mm -hmm. on. And, um, they do a, a great job. Yeah, so I think we covered most of what we wanted to. Uh, did I leave anything out? I don't know. I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lot to it, um, and I, I, the more I learn about it, the more impressed I am and, and the, at the complexity of it. For example, you know, it, it, I couldn't get my head around why if I'm calling from my cell phone, I could be in your system two blocks away, but if I say, where is my phone, and I use the app, it gets me within 20 feet. Like the, the, the systems aren't on the, they're not they're, the same. We also, depending where you're at, a wireless uh, cell phone will triangulate from a cell tower. Yeah. So there is a strong possibility that if you're on that border or if your cell phone happens to hit a tower, that you will get rerouted to another agency. And you and you really don't know because typically the common language for agencies is 911 where's your emergency. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, as a resident you wouldn't know did I did I reach, mm -hmm. you know, the Oakland Regional Communication Center or did I reach, you know, Chicago Cook County yeah. or Chicago is a great example. Yeah. We had a lot of transfer calls that come through Chicago and until they figure out where they're at and sometimes they'll, you know, transfer you over. Um, and it, it's more questioning to make sure that we can yeah. identify where everyone is. Um, and we do handle um, the center itself. I just looked at last year's. We averaged last year over 191,000 calls um, into our center. So to be able to busy, weed almost 200,000 phone calls to make sure that, you know, we're going to the, the right place and we're getting the, the right calls. And yeah. It's, it's a busy center. Yeah, it's a source of great pride. Thank you very much for coming by, and uh, we'll see you on Fall on the Green, and I'll see you around Village Hall. And if residents have questions, um, we're going to put your email up on the screen, and uh, they can reach out. Sounds good. Thank you very much okay. for having me. Okay, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Okay.